guys, my name is Pixie, and today I'm going to review an extension that you can add to your projects in Appy Builder. This extension is compatible with each of the current drag and drop websites that stem from App Inventor and was created by extension developer Andres Cotes. The extension allows you to include a sidebar menu in your app. The current version is almost identical to the sidebar you'll find in most apps that have been created with Android Studio, which is currently the industry standard for Android app development, and I mean that as a huge compliment. I think Andres has done a phenomenal job recreating this very professional component for use in your drag and drop platforms. The extension was last updated just a few days ago and the developer has plans to continue making updates and changes to this extension. Currently the extension has a free and a paid option. The free option will still give you a clean sidebar allowing you to add menu items, custom icons, and a custom logo. We'll be focusing on the paid version in this review so you can see all of the additional options that are available with this extension. So let's get started. I'm first going to focus on how I want my sidebar to look. In Photoshop, I've created a template that is 1080 pixels wide by 1920 pixels tall. This is actually the standard size for Android screen design. In Appy Builder, we don't want to use images that are this big, but we can start with this default size and make the images smaller, keeping the same ratio. All I've done is create a color scheme that I like. I've saved the logo that I want to appear at the top of the sidebar. My logo happens to be 864 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall. Notice that 864 pixels is exactly 80% of the original resolution width of 1080. So if I want my logo to take up the entire sidebar width, then I need to create an image that is the exact width of the sidebar. I'm actually going to save this as a large image and not make it smaller. The image will be resized as needed, but I want it to appear crisp on the screen because it's my logo, so it needs to look polished and professional. Optionally, you could use an image of any size with a transparent background and your logo will appear perfectly centered at the top of the sidebar. I've also made sure to choose a color that will appear when the user selects a menu option. This color will replace the selected color for that menu option and you'll see how this comes together in just a second. So the pre-design is finished. Let's open up Appy Builder and use this extension. If you've downloaded the AIA file, then the extension should already be installed in your project and you can customize from there how you want it to look. I'm going to drag a sidebar extension onto my viewing window and you'll notice a lot of new properties that are specific to this extension. Alpha icon and alpha text will change the opacity of each menu icon and name. These values should be any number between 0 and 1, where 0 represents a completely transparent or invisible image, and 1 represents a completely opaque or solid image. I'm going to change the default decimal values to 1. I want my icons and my text to be opaque, and I think it will look really nice against that darker blue background. Color BG will set the background color of the sidebar, and color icons will set the color of the icons. I'm going to set my background color to correspond with the design that I created in Photoshop and I'll change the icon colors to white. While you're developing your app, select the development option. Don't forget to uncheck this option when you're ready to build your app. The elevation sets the drop shadow for the sidebar. Usually a number between 0 through 20 is a good size for the sidebar elevation. I'm going to keep this at 16 though. Text color will set the color of the menu text that appears in the sidebar. I'm going to set this color to white as well to match the icons. The type font icon sets the font face for the icons used in the sidebar. There are a lot of really great icon fonts that have been created over the past few years, but the paid version of this sidebar already comes with material icons pre-installed. A link to this website will be added in the video description because you'll need to reference back to it in order to add icons to your sidebar. We'll talk about this more in just a second. You can also add a specific font for each item in your menu. The paid version of the sidebar also comes with a built-in font, but I've chosen to upload a different font for my menu. Lastly, we can change the width of the sidebar. This should also be a number between 0 and 1. You can use a decimal number such as 0.8, which represents 80% of the screen size. You could actually enter a number larger than 1, but you won't be able to see your entire menu, so remember that when I created my logo image, the width of that image was exactly 80% of the width of a standard Android app. Keep in mind that if any of these options are left blank, then your app will not run properly. The development checkbox is the exception to this. You should keep this option checked during development and uncheck it once you're ready to build your app. Now that we're familiar with the extension's properties, let's move on to the block section. It looks like we can currently set values for each of the properties, but we can only get the value for color icons. We can reference the sidebar, and we also have three interpolator values. We also currently have one event and three procedures. 
We can do something after selecting a menu item, we can show and hide the sidebar, and we can initialize the sidebar. So we definitely have enough to get started. I'm gonna create a couple of optional global variables. The first will change the action bar color to be more uniform with my color scheme, and the second will be a variable for the interpolator argument. First, I'm going to organize a few start values into the initialize screen procedure. I'll set the color for the action bar, and I want to access this sidebar through Appy Builder's built-in menu, but I just want this menu item to be the only thing that I see. This way I don't have two different menus. Next, set global interpolator to accelerate and decelerate, and add two local variables named color icons and background color. These variables are also optional. I want my sidebar to have a uniformed look, so I'm just gonna reuse these variables when I need to. Grab the sidebar.start procedure and make a list block. To save space, you can also use a list from CSV row block, but let's create a sidebar with five menu items. Copy this block twice into the next two arguments. These three arguments must be the exact same size or your app won't function properly. Let's say that the sidebar allows users to go to the home screen, profile, settings, information section, and we'll also have an option to close the sidebar and return to the current screen. In the icons list, we'll need to look for icons from the material icons font that represent our menu items. I found a few that I think look nice, so I'm just gonna enter the name of each of those icons into the corresponding index for the second list. Notice that on the material icons website, account circle is two words. I can't have any spaces in my text block for this extension's argument, so I'll need to use an underscore in place of the spacebar. As I stated earlier, these local variables are completely optional. If you want a different color for each icon, you could use a text block with a specific hexadecimal value. I want all of these icons to be the same color, so I'm just gonna copy and paste my color icons variable five times into the final list. I'll use the image I created earlier as my sidebar logo, which I've already uploaded to Appy Builder. The second color argument will be the color that appears once you've selected a menu item. You'll want to use a hexadecimal value within a text box for this argument. I've chosen to create a local variable so I can make changes all in one place at the top of the procedure. Lastly, I'll use the global variable I created for the interpolator argument. There are currently three available interpolators, which is basically the animation for the sidebar. You can use any one of these three options, but I just like this animation. I think it's pretty fluid and it looks really nice. Now I can call this procedure when my screen initializes. Next, I'm going to create the only menu item I want for Appy Builder's default menu. Grab an initialize menu event and a menu item add procedure. We'll add a menu item named menu with no icon value. If we select this menu option, we're going to show the sidebar using the global interpolator variable. After the user selects a menu item from the sidebar, we're going to hide the sidebar and use the global interpolator variable to animate the sidebar closing. Each of these menu items needs to take the user to the appropriate screen, except the close item, which is basically just there in case the user accidentally opens the menu but didn't mean to. So we'll grab an if-else block that says, if we select any menu item that isn't the close option, then open another screen with the same name as the menu item. Notice here that I only have two screens in this example, so naturally you'll want to create a screen for each of these items. You'll need a home screen, a profile screen, settings, and information. Also notice that the name profile is in all caps, but I've written profile in the menu with a leading capital letter. So the screen that I'm opening is the same value as the menu item I've selected, but I'm just declaring that the screen is written in all capital letters. We can now test the app and see what it looks like. Click on the built-in menu on the action bar and select menu. This brings up the sidebar and it looks exactly how I wanted it to look in the pre-design. So that's awesome. I can click on close, which collapses the sidebar menu and keeps me on screen one. I can open it back up again. And remember, I didn't create screens for home settings and info, so I'm just gonna select profile. And voila, it takes me to the profile screen. Now keep in mind that my menu option still appears on the profile screen, but the sidebar does not because my sidebar component is located on screen one with all of the blocks associated with the sidebar. So I've got a couple of options. I can create four different screens and just copy and paste the sidebar blocks into each screen, and that would work fine. I could also keep everything on one screen and just create layout components as a section. So I just toggle the visibility of each section and it would look like multiple screens, but it would only be one screen. That could be an option if you have too many screens in your app and you need a workaround. All right, guys, um, that's all for now. I would absolutely recommend this extension if you want to set your apps apart and really make them stand out. It's such a well-developed extension and it's very easy to use. I would obviously download the free version, try it out, and see from there if you wanna to upgrade to the paid version. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can find me if you need help with anything. 
All of the links mentioned in this video are provided in the video description below. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!